Hallelujah. Good to see everybody here today and uh, um, to be able to worship with you. Amen. And for us to be able to delve into the Word together. Amen. Amen. Sister Jessica, if you don't mind, take a bath this evening so you start smelling better because <laughs> there's something wrong with this picture here. <laughs> Getting a complex. Don't worry, I have to stand by myself all the time. So it's all right. It's probably got to do with how much I sweat and stuff. They, they know I've got problems. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus in the house this morning. There's, there's something that the Lord's wanting to do something the Lord's wanting to do. Hallelujah. We got to increase our praying. We got to increase our fasting, our Bible reading. We got to show up for church more than ready. More than ready for the move of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm looking for the day, Brother Rice, when we beat the Lord to the punch. Before he starts moving, we've already begun to praise him. We already begin to worship him. We've already begun to respond to what we know. Amen. Well, I'm looking forward to somebody. I, 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 I'm looking for it. I'm praying for it. I'm believing in somebody being filled with the Holy Ghost during worship service. Amen. Amen. I like it. It happens that way sometimes, Brother Ray. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Can you turn me down just a hair, brother? I'm getting a little reverb. Our, we're working on our lapel mic, so you'll have to bear with me. Jeremiah chapter 18. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. Boy, I'm already feeling it, and I ain't even got started. That, that doesn't bode well for you. I sent Brother Shannon my, my notes yesterday about 4.30. And uh, he said, oh, goodness, somebody's in trouble. You got it this early. Now listen, I want you to follow this. I, I want you to follow along the best that you can. Follow, follow along and, see, and see, see what has to happen. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. God spoke to Jeremiah and said, go down to the house of a potter and when you get there, I'm going to talk to you. What's happening right that minute? He's talking to him already, Brother Terry. He's already talking to him. But Brother Rice, he said, I want you to go down to the potter's house and when you get there, then I'm going to cause you to hear my words. Uh, it, when, I, when I read that and, and I read through it, Brother David, I kind of scratched my head a little bit and I thought, why, why does he have to go to the potter's house? It's obvious you can talk to him where he's at. Amen? It's obvious that, you, that he can hear the word of the Lord where he's at. Why does he have to go to the potter's house? The potter. It was regarded as an inferior trade. It was not one of the... Very few people were born saying, I, when I grow up, I want to be a potter. It's good to see Jacob and Jamie with us again this morning. It was regarded as an inferior trade, but provided a universal need. Potters lived in settlements in the lower city of Jerusalem, in the valley of Hinnom. Thus, that's the reason the Lord said, go down to the potter's house. They lived in settlements in the lower city near the potsherd gate and also near the tower of the furnaces or the pottery kilns. The potter, Brother Billy, would find the right kind of clay. He would find the right kind of clay, remove the stones and the other rough and less pliable materials before creating a vessel by shaping it and then baking it and taking the finished product to the market to sell. Only a vessel that was marred in the making could be made over to another vessel. A vessel that had already been baked and then broken or otherwise marred, Brother David, was only good to be thrown into the potter's field. 
But it's when we're in the hand of the potter. When the vessel is in the hand of the potter is when it can be remade, be molded and shaped from one vessel to another as pleased to the potter. Verse 3 says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Now the wheels is referring to the potter's wheel. A wooden device that he would sit down at and pump his pedal, much like you would a sewing machine, but it, would, it was connected to a, a spindle that would turn the clay so the potter could have provided the necessary pressure to mold the vessel into whatever the potter desired for it to be. Verse number 4 says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. Everybody say marred. There were two things that caused the vessel to be marred. One was impurities in the clay. And two was inadequate preparation. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. If, I'm, I'm not going to preach about this, but if we would get this revelation, we would realize that much of what we call hypocrisy and much of the feeling that we feel about be, people being hypocrites is, is, is totally wrong. we we got to understand that people have got to be able to be marred in the hand of the potter. God forbid that we push marred vessels out of the hand of the potter, that we push people that have problems, that have issues away from the Lord. God forbid. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Remember, impurities in it are inadequate preparation because the preparation, Brother Billy, was done with their feet. And they would try the clay, Brother Rice, until all the air was out of it. Which is a second cousin to leaven, but that's that's another that's a lesson for another time. Verse number five. Then, then, excuse me, it was marred in the hand of the potter. Verse number four. I didn't finish. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Verse number five says. Then, then. The word of the Lord came to me saying. I want to preach to you this morning on this subject. Watch the potter work and hear my words. Watch the potter work and hear my words. Because now the words of the Lord will carry a greater weight than if just spoken without the illustration. Jeremiah needed the visual concept of what the Lord desired to do with His people, with His creation, before the Word would achieve its greatest impact. Verse number 6 says, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Just like the potter had the marred vessel in his hand, but he he smashed it down, made it back into a ball of clay, and created another vessel that seemed good to the potter. O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Now there are a myriad of messages in this passage. The question in this chapter, in this verse, Brother Billy, is in fact rhetorical. It's not a question, Brother David, that he's asking, can I do it? He is stating, and they are well aware of the knowledge uh, that we are all, everybody say all, we are all in the hands of God. He can do with us as He wishes, Brother Pete. We are all subject to the power, to the authority, to the divine providence of God Almighty. Amen. The fact of the matter is, He can do whatever He chooses with each and every one of us. The type of the potter as God and the clay as His people is revisited at various times throughout Scripture. But perhaps none is so pertinent as at the creation when the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Isaiah 64 and 8 says, But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father. 
We are the clay and thou art our potter. And we all, we all, everybody say all again. And we all are the work of thy hand. Amen. Oh, I, I wish that could really sink to us. We sometimes feel like that when we make a decision to come to God, that that is then our introduction to Him. But can I tell you, it's not in my notes, but can I tell you in Jeremiah chapter 1 that the Lord spoke to Jeremiah and said, Before you were in your mama, I knew you. Aren't you glad, Brother David, that we don't have to get right with Him before He knows us? We don't have to get everything lined out with Him before He knows us. But He knows us in the hog pen. He knows us in the gutter. He knows us on the bar stool. He knows us in somebody's bed we're not supposed to be in. We are all the work of thy hand. I believe it's the book of Malachi. I don't have it in my notes, but it says, Hath we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? With Isaiah's clearly stated truth that I just read to you in 64 and 8, of the type of the potter, and that we are the creation of his hands, we then have to take Jeremiah's experience, reconcile the desires of God for Israel as displayed and spoken to Jeremiah with the desires of the potter. we got to reconcile the, the, the picture of the potter, the, the work of the potter. we got to reconcile that visionary, that, that concept with the work of God in our lives. Can I say that one more time? We've got to be able to take what the potter's doing on the wheel, working the vessel. He found out it was marred. He smashed it down and made it a new vessel to what the Lord wants to do in our lives. Amen. Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin and so death passed upon all men. There's that word all again. For that all have sinned. Romans 5 and 12. Now let me take you back just a minute. Jeremiah, I believe this is the right term I'm going to use. Brother Billy, Jeremiah was kind of persona non grata among the Jews. Didn't nobody like him. You read it. How many of you remember reading in the bread about Jeremiah? Man, they, they didn't like that poor rascal. They even asked him, seek after the Lord for us. And then when he sought after the Lord and got an answer, they said, we don't like it, you're going to jail. They didn't, they didn't like him. They, in one particular place, they tried to starve him to death, Brother Mark. They put him down in a dungeon in a, in a slop, the Bible says. They put him down in, in, a, in a wet, grimy slop in the bottom of a dungeon. And if somebody hadn't have been led by the Lord to go over there and let some bed sheets down and to pick him up, he would have died of starvation down there. Amen. Jeremiah, what, didn't nobody think he was a good preacher. All he preached over and over and over again was repent, 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 repent. Turn back to God. Turn away from the world. Turn back to God. Amen. Now before y'all get any ideas, I done searched all over town. There ain't no dungeons for you to throw me in. <laughs> Besides that, it's going to take a couple of you. Okay. But we cannot, and you hear me now, I cannot, as a God-called minister of the gospel, get away from the message of repent. The first message Jesus preached was repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We have got to have a repentant heart, a repentant mind. We have got to always be striving to stay turned around to God. Rather than turn our back on Him and walk away. But it is into this dynamic that the Lord says go to the potter's house. And when you get to the potter's house, brother Eugene, I'm going to speak to you. And so he saw the potter working. And he was making a beautiful vessel. But somehow it, it didn't suit the potter. It was marred in the hand of the potter. So he smashed it. It's, 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 you, you can look it up historically. It was a common thing they did. He, he took it and smashed it back into a ball. Started all over. And made it into another vessel that seemed pleasing to the potter. But how, how do we... 
and, and, and I probably need to do a study to a little more and realize all the things that the Lord told Jeremiah to do and, and to preach to these people. And, and you see the long suffering of God and, and the desires of God uh, work, working in these people's lives. And, and Brother David and I both had mentioned it before. Jeremiah got through to nobody. There is no record of Jeremiah's ministry being effective. But yet there is an eternal principle that is revealed to Jeremiah in the 18th chapter of the story of the potter. Because Jeremiah, brother Billy, could not really comprehend what we know the Lord can do with a life. But it was an insight, it was a glimpse into the, the, the promises and the future and the plan, the mind of God that would change a life. These people, you got to understand that these people, the only hope they had was in that sacrificial animal that would, that would be sacrificed on the day of atonement and those sins be rolled away for year to year. There was no up close and personal relationship with God that they could, that they could liken to the potter working on a vessel. As a matter of fact, in the proper context of this scripture, you, it would read that it was the entire nation of Israel that he was speaking of. Rather than as we understand it, our relationship is an individual one. My relationship with God is not contingent upon anybody. But Romans 5 and 12 lets us know, Wherefore, as by one man, that was Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Amen. Then that leads us, following the Scriptures, following that line of thinking, that leads us to David's revelation and his great passage of repentance in Psalm 51 and verse number 5 when he said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now this is an acknowledgement of the sinful desires of the flesh. What David had done is he watched this gal take a bath and he was attracted to her. He lusted after her and he sent her far and she came to him and he slept with her. And she was another man's wife. And so you, the, the story goes, many of you know it, those of you that don't, I'll give you the highlights. Uh, she ends up pregnant and, and her husband's out on the battlefield and ain't no way it could be his baby. So David sends for the husband to come home and he hopes he'll go sleep with his wife. But the, but the husband was so honorable, brother David, that he would not go sleep with his wife. And, and even David even tried to get him drunk and go sleep with his wife. And he refused. So David ended up, ain't got no option, they got to kill him. He sends a Joab, and they, they take him out, put him in the front, leave him all by himself, and they kill him. Now David thinks he's free. But the prophet of God, Nathan, comes to David and said, listen, buddy, you messed up. You messed up. I want you to think about this now. For all have sinned. He told him a parable about one lamb and a bunch of lambs. And he said the man that had one lamb, somebody took it and, and, uh, and kept all his. And David said, let me know who that man is. I'm going to take him out. And Nathan said, you're the man. And David knew he was busted. So immediately, read Psalm 51. That's, that's a note you can write down. Anytime you get messed up in sin and you get making mistakes or you're feeling down, feel like you need to be reminded of the mercies of God, go read Psalm 51. It's beautiful. But David said, Behold, I was shaped... Oh, God, help me right now. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So D David is not, you might, might read into this a little bit of, of Flip Wilson's theology. David was not saying the devil made me do it. What David was saying is I got off track. I got off track and I went back to where the flesh was the boss. Because some people get the wrong idea that when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that's why some people can't live for God. Is when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you won't make the, you won't have those same desires anymore. Well, that's not true because you're still in the flesh. Now the Holy Ghost will help you. The Holy Ghost will lead you. But you've always got the option to put the Holy Ghost on a shelf and go do whatever in the world you want to do. So David says, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. 
Now that don't mean it's a sin to have relations with your wife or your husband. Some people have tried to say that. Use that passage. That's not what it means. It means that all of us are born into sin because of Adam's mess up way back in the beginning. And if we so desire, if we so choose, we can go back there anytime we want to. Come on now. I know everybody in here wasn't born with the Holy Ghost. Okay. Brother David, anytime I want to, I can go back to what the flesh wants to do. Anytime I want to. Because I was born into sin and shaping in iniquity. With this knowledge that we're all born into sin, and by all being born into sin, we are all in need of redemption. We must also acknowledge the role that the power of the Holy Ghost plays in remaking us. Okay? We gotta, this makes the terminology, oh God help me in the Holy Ghost right now. This makes the terminology that Jesus uses make more sense. We gotta acknowledge that we were born into sin. Everybody say born into sin. Shaping in iniquity. Oh come on now. Y'all got to help me better than that. You're going to be here a while today. Okay? Brother Billy, I was born into sin. Gary and Judy got married. And they had a baby and it was me. And I was born into sin, Brother Robbie. And I was born needing repentance. I was born needing salvation. But on September the 28th, 1982, I was born again. Oh, I, that's what I said it makes the terminology make, make more sense when we realize uh, even King David said I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity all he had to go back to the benchmark was when he came forth from his mama but when somebody is born again of the water and of the spirit I don't have to go back to when I was born with my mama I gotta go back when I was born of the spirit Because it is then, in a prayer of repentance, that I acknowledge the power of the potter to make me to what He wanted me to be. The role of the Holy Ghost in remaking us makes much more sense with the type of the potter. He made it a vessel, but it was marred. Oh, God have mercy. He made it a vessel. Hath we not all one God? One Father? Hath not one God created us? We were made by God. But we were found. God have mercy. We were found to be imperfect. We were found to be marred. We were found of impurities. And we were found in a lack of... There was, there was stuff in us that needed to be changed. And so the potter, the potter, you can't be good enough to change yourself. You can't pay enough to change yourself. You can't even come to church enough to change yourself. But you got to be the potter changes you. And it's very important to acknowledge as seem good to the potter. But, watch the potter work. Everybody say that. Watch the potter work. Oh, God have mercy. Watch the potter work and hear my words. You say that part too if you want to. That sheds new light. Understanding it's the power of the Holy Ghost that lets us be born again. And Brother Pete, we start all over as babies in the spiritual. We're learning how to live again. That's why, now listen to me right now. That's why people that don't know the Lord, that have grown cold in the Lord, backslid, walked away from God because of holiness. I said because of holiness, which is about 99.999% of them. That's right. Yeah. I ain't never heard nobody walk away because the Spirit's too strong. I ain't never heard nobody walk away because God healed them too much. But I've heard all kinds of people walk away. I just can't live that life. Just can't live that life. 
That's why, and I'm going to preach it again, that's why we got to let people be babies and grow up and learn what pleases God. And learn that holiness is more of a safety issue than it is a make my life miserable issue. Amen. Now, he told, boy, I'm trying, but he told Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, it's, it's, it's not that much difference than Cornelius praying an angel down and the angel saying, you need to go here to what the preacher says. It's in the same ballpark. He told Jeremiah, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, spoke to Jeremiah and said, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words. So it was important, Brother Mark, that Jeremiah see the potter work and then hear the words. And this sheds total new light on Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. When? After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Get this. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Think about it. What are, what are we commanded to be witnesses to? The work of the potter and the words of God. Now think about it just a minute. Jeremiah, go watch the potter work. And when you see the potter work, you hear my words. Listen to me now. The witness that you and I are commanded to be is not so much the witness of the words of our mouth, but it is the witness of the impact the Holy Ghost has had on our life. It's a witness of the change that has taken place uh, as we draw closer to the Lord. It is a witness of what that we don't talk the same, that we don't look the same, that we don't act the same, that we don't respond to things the same way. That is the greatest witness. You can invite people to church until you don't have any breath. You can talk about our food and you talk about our preaching, you talk about our programs, you talk about everything. But the greatest, best effective, most useful witness that you or I will ever be is the evidence of what the potter has done in our life. Think about it. After that the Holy... God have mercy. After that the Holy Ghost has come on you. Who's the Holy Ghost? Jesus, God Almighty. Behold, O house of Israel, cannot I do... Cannot I do with you as the potter with the clay? When we come and repent, what we're doing is we're acknowledging the right of the potter to make us what he wants us to be. And giving up our right to continue to wallow in a marred vessel. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3 says, Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone such as the commandments would have been, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And the Bible so clearly tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, when we come under the influence of the power of God, 
We are no longer witnesses. We are no longer witnesses uh, that we were shaping in iniquity and that we were born into sin. But we are witnesses uh, of the changing, transforming, mind-blowing power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 